On this episode of Not Well, we talk about Christianity. Christian, Christian, Christians. They're all over the news. <laughs> Fake Christian persecution. Tall people on airplanes. We talk about short kings and short jesters. And what's the most embarrassing thing you've ever done? We talk about wet dreams. We talk about how Santa ruined all of our lives. We talk about woke AI bots. <laughs> and obviously, I, yeah, there's a big. We talk about how Bobby loves woke AI bots, I like but the woke not woke people, people to say. I can't wait for you guys to hear this episode. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Not Well. I'm Bobby. I'm Jim. Welcome to our new listeners and our old listeners alike. And our medium. And the medium listeners, listeners, the ones that haven't been here in a while. Welcome back, bitch. Uh, um, honestly, why would you quit us? You know, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you, know, one, you know, one thing that's like horrifying is that we we're on episode 177. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was introducing the show to someone new today, and I, you know, they're like, how long have you been doing this? Like, and I was forever. Like, well, before COVID. And then they just like their face was like before COVID. Do you even I don't remember before COVID, but What's we were doing is I this. don't. And I think doing this through COVID actually helped our minds. Yeah, you're right. I really do. Because we have a connection kept us to the connected. Past. Right. <laughs> it's sweating under my tit. I love um, it. Yeah, I th- I always think back to that too. I'm like, wow. I mean, we were in LA right before COVID. So we were like on the peak of our rise. And then all of a sudden it was we like, were Let's like, shut it down. Nope. And I was like, well, that didn't work out. I mean, Grant ignored us. Now who knows that bitch might be on RuPaul. RuPaul probably. They're all girls. Girls. All the girls. All okay. the girls. All the girlfriends. And then for a while, like we couldn't record because we were afraid of coming to people's houses, like including our friends. Like we just didn't see our friends no. for like five months because we were like, oh my God, COVID. Fucking COVID. And then everybody's like, fuck it. And now it's like people have had COVID twice, although I've never been diagnosed with COVID. You've well, had, I've been I've been diagnosed yeah. once. And then your partner had it once and you had the same Right after me. So I think I had one of the strains. I hope I did, because honestly, honestly, if you can get through this winter without it, I already got it. I already got it. Bada bing, bada boom, babe. Antibodies. Um, I just want to make sure uh, everybody knows to call our hotline. It's right here. It's right Scrolling here. Scrolling down. Look at it um, here. Ding, call ding. our hotline. Tell us what the fuck's up. Um, tell we us your life problems and see if we can solve them, because we're good at problem we're solving. We're really good at problem solving. And also, I really want you guys to call drunk. I, like I think it'd be really funny if people had this on speed dial, like when they leave the bar, and be like, "When the speaking of drunk, I haven't been like blackout drunk in at least a month." I think <sighs> it sucks. It sucks, but I you've been I've been good. Yeah, but we've you've been dealing with some personal issues. Too much dick in the cut. <coughs> um, do you want to talk about your issues or no? Yeah, I guess we can, and like give updates. Well, okay, so basically, what's happening with Jim is. <laughs> Um, there's been some vomiting issues. Um, he's bl- he's bulimic. He's b- <laughs> they're like, aren't you supposed to be skinny when uh, you're bulimic? You know what's really funny? Well, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, is he bulimic? And I paused because I was like, am I gonna get canceled? <laughs> Fuck it, I don't care. No, literally, like I'm done being worried if about. If I'm by bulimic, way. I'm doing it wrong. Um, or are you but- doing it right because you'd be my size then? Oh my god, the way you eat, honey. <laughs> Oh that guacamole God. you showed me last week. <gasps> that was good. Or mole, not guaca. I was like, this mole was out. What does mole the- mean? Sauce, I think. I think it's just like oh. sauce. And then like guaca is like aguacate. So I think they take that part of the avocado, avocado. word. And then turn it into guacamole. Sauce from the gu- avocado. I think that's. That's, uh, that's actually really guess. interesting. I don't really know. But like there's tons of moles out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Jim's been throwing up. So oh, yeah. that's why he hasn't been blackout drunk. He's been watching his drinking, but now it's terrible. I ha- think it's not that. Like, I think it might be one of my antidepressants. So well, that's not one, a- my only antidepressant. I have. What? I think I have what? two, technically. You do. Oh, God. Well, oh, you're more fucked up than me. But I'm on low doses. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but don't worry. I'll take it at night instead of the morning. <laughs> But I've been vomiting a lot, and we don't know why, and we're trying to figure it out. I had an ultrasound today, so... So we're getting to the answer, so he'll be blackout before we know it. God. 
it's really hard to get laid when you're not blackout drunk. Cause like you look at other people and you're like hideous, hideous. You look at yourself in the mirror, hideous, hideous. Yeah. But when you're drunk, it's kind of like, I'm feeling You're like, sexy. I don't care that my body's disgusting. Oh yeah. You want to suck this dick. God, everybody's so and it's gross. Like, you don't want to when you're sober. Cause you're like, eh, I'm good. Like, no. No, you really don't. But when you're drunk, you're like, oh, oh, yeah. oh. And like, like you like that. Oh, oh. And it's yes. like, no. Like that's you'll go out. Cute. You go out in Columbus and find hot people. That doesn't happen when you're sober. Okay. No. Or like, on Grinder or on or Scruff on or on any oh of those. God. There's all ugly. Sorry. I realized when I was in Mexico City, like when you're sober, Grinder is rough. But when you're drunk, but when you're drunk, it's fine. fine. You're like, yeah. Because you just pretend like you're going to meet down up for a little fun. And then you don't. And then you just send pictures and but, you come. And then it's like, but nah. when you're sober, you're like, no one on Grinder is attractive. Like and that's not why I made a lot person. of friends off the apps. Um, and that's what I did in Mexico City. Yeah. Like the guy honestly, from Cincinnati, he's a great friend. I'm going to say this. Yeah. A lot of the friends that I have or had, I guess I've kind of graduated from that group a little <laughs> bit. But like, you're I, no longer a Grinder gay. No, but I met a lot of people on those apps like yeah. that became friends and I did not mess around with them. Oh, and so it was like a nice, like a good boy. So I'm thinking if you're out there, you're lonely in your own city, go maybe on grinder. go on grinder and just say, Hey, I'm looking for like, I want to go to the bar. I'm not trying to take five loads at once. I'm trying to find friends. Cause some people really truly are like new to the area and that, what else do you do? How else do you meet people? You go to a gay bar, you go to the bar, you smoke cigarettes. That's How what else I did. Do you meet people without the risk of being shot up and killed? Well, no, you don't go to a gay bar. You go on grinder. you go on grinder and then you might be poisoned when you get there. Um, uh, that's, and it's not a lie. <laughs> It happened here in Columbus, Ohio, actually. Didn't it? Somebody like killed somebody in like North. <laughs> There's been a lot of bodies in the Scioto River here in Columbus over the years. Uh, we're um, still unsure where that one kid disappeared to when he went dear, to the alley. Uh, rest in peace. Uh, uh, R.I.P. He left Union. So if that tells you anything. <laughs> <laughs> and you know about Union. Remember I sent you something from the Union crowd? <sighs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Can we talk about that? I don't know. Are we? Yeah, we should. Go ahead. I mean, it's, okay. It's our show. Let's. There's someone we should give a little shout out to. We'd like to shout out to all the bartenders and, and <laughs> all the locals that work really hard here in Columbus. We really do appreciate you. That's a true statement. Okay. So. Are you about to like <laughs> rub some dirt on some wounds? Is that, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> some high. Dirt <laughs> on some wounds. You want to rub some dirt on my wound? Oh, that's like a pussy. I think like that would be bad. <sighs> rub some salt in the wound. It's like paint, making it more painful. <laughs> So are you going to <laughs> rat somebody out right now? Are you about to like blast somebody? Is that what's no, happening? No, okay. I will not. I would never. I'm a lady. Um, <laughs> I know you want to. Do you want to? <laughs> no. Okay, well then fine. But basically this is an example of what we're dealing with. One of the uh, union bartenders posted a screenshot of their tweet on their okay. Instagram story. <laughs> and this was the tweet content. Whatever y'all get into tonight, just remember you can only count on yourself. No one else. Let it sink in. I had to. And then a crying face emoji. <laughs> and that's a screenshot How of that How old is this tweet. person maybe? <laughs> get can I get an age chat? I would say looks like they're in their 30s, but probably <laughs> late 20s. <laughs> I love those. Okay, um, yeah, because I'm like. I'm like, you're how old? 22? I you know. look 40. <laughs> I um, literally look and I'm like. What? what is going on here? I love it that I look good for my age. People are like, you're thank 38. God. I'm like, God, I know. Thank God. Like when yeah. I was down, yeah. Everywhere in Mexico City, they're like, how oh, old? You, well, now, we, this is not a good day for me because I've been working a lot, but. Yeah, we were just talking about earlier, we need to get a makeup artist in we here. We need a makeup We need artist. makeup, we need hair. Because now we we, need, when you look your age, it doesn't feel good. We're over a thousand people on TikTok now, so we can uh, go live. What? So we need to get a producer in here. We need to get makeup, hair. It's the whole big thing. But how do you feel about posting your own tweet and calling out someone without using their name and then putting it on your Instagram story to get attention as well? Well, I think it's, and no offense again to right. anybody who did this, but it's trash. It's <laughs> embarrassing. It's, it's embarrassing. Isn't it it's cringe? It's insecure. No, it's, cringe, it's cringe. As the kids say, it's totally as the Gen lit Z, or whatever. It's like Gen Z like highlighted this word cringe, but then they're, they're the, the cringiest people. Yeah. yeah, they're like the cringiest people ever. And they're like, cringe. It's like, why do you It's so cringe. And then they do something cringe and it's like gen z wake up like wake up and smell the coffee don't post your own sad tweet complaining about how someone didn't meet up with you if you really want to here's cringe. You, let me just like we don't care we need to teach gen z okay yeah, when you're like, like millennials had to go through this from the yeah, start right we did. like we were the but we creators didn't have social media to like blast it but we were the creators like so on our our official like oh i'm gonna tweet this and they're gonna see was um the aim uh, away message away message brb brb um or becky's being a bitch can't meet up with yeah, her or like some kind of or something yeah. like not feeling it dot dot mm -hmm. dot 
Okay, so that's the vague booking. That's a that's vague the book. vague. Okay. The vague. But here's the thing. Here's how you really do it. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> you take somebody else's tweet that says that, and you retweet it. Yeah. You take somebody else's Instagram post and you repost it, <laughs> but you it. don't copy your own and post it on your own Instagram after you put it on your Twitter, <laughs> as if everybody didn't get enough of you already on Twitter. Now you think they want to see it on Instagram. And really, all you're doing is trying to get your friends to come hang out I with know, you. It's and so at sad. the end of the day, honey, and this is what makes me think he's not over thirty. Like you got to just be you, bitch. Yeah. Like if, if they don't want to hang out with you, then you need to go hang out with somebody else. If they've abandoned you, adopt a dog. Like oh, right. wait, you already have. Um, and also, oh, <laughs> that was now that was the shade. There's um, the shade. Uh, get another dog or, or something. Here's like, an idea. Like I why don't you find a new group of friends that maybe aren't going to leave care you? About right. You. Or why don't you stop trying to chase these dreams of being this like popular gay when you're not going to be it? <sighs> And Nobody not, is. And I, I have to stop there because I have other things to share that are, if you can't say anything nice. Then you don't say anything at all. So we're not, we didn't use a name. We didn't. We didn't use a name. We didn't use anything else. We didn't use a name. We didn't use anything else. We didn't else. talk about OnlyFans. We didn't. Um, we didn't talk about, we could promote that if that. Um, it's even cute. It's not. We can't. Okay, we're, we're just going to move cute. on from I've seen this. It on Twitter. Twitter. We're, we're, um, we got to move on. Yeah, so. Twitter. Why do you need OnlyFans? I have Twitter. <laughs> I Except for I did see that like people are making so much money on OnlyFans still, and they're like yep. ugly. Um, so no, I'm like, maybe I should do it. I found this Ohio couple. Like they both have XXX in their name, so there, there it is. Right. But neither one of them are particularly. <clears throat> mm. And yeah, but yet they're making probably money. No, no, they have a lot of followers. So I know even if like that's so weird when you see like these ugly ass people and you're like how are like, like five dollars a month adds up when you even have like 20 people subscribe that's a hundred dollars really a bizarre month to me actually people for jerking a- off and having sex with your boyfriend Oof. i know but yeah, that's I not even <sighs> you would only have one one post every six weeks so we can't eight. um every <laughs> and, and, I'm a, and oh my god <laughs> eight weeks every eight weeks uh <laughs> actually i really need to come this weekend um uh, just i case. know you have to because he's disappointed load. oh he hates me yeah, we're gonna have to go to counseling. It's because of the it's Prozac. Been a it's long no joke. Time I can't. I don't know Matt. what to do. I don't know what to do. The I, timing is not working out for me and Matt. Like it's the holidays. I mean, when you a lot. have um, your stepson show up right at the exact moment, you finally feel horny. It's not cute. It's not. It's that the really timing. Sucks. You can't plan that either. Yeah, or you like know if why it's eleven thirty. Like it was a random text from someone at work who texted something about their sex life and gave details and then I like well said person my mind said person we're done with because said person didn't cut show up for me when I needed him but um but regardless you but got horny regardless, from a text. Got horny and then it's like and step like, son nah. shows up so now I know why married couples get divorced like they never have sex ever so I Matt and I are working on it. He's like, we need to plan better. And I'm like, that's plan kinda, better. I'm like, how do I plan getting horny, though? I can't plan it. That that's the problem. I've, that's what I need. I need to schedule it so that I know. Okay. Like, so so like I, I need to get horny for this day. But it sucks because then that day comes and you have all this anxiety. You're like, God damn I gotta, it. And that's why you need Cialis, though. Because mm-hmm. then, then if you just would, get a little horny. Because that's the problem is once you get going, you're fine. I have a trick for you. Send him. To, we'll say, like, I have to go get ready or I have to pee first. Go to the bathroom. Open up Twitter. Take your fluff time. Fluff up. Take your time. Fluff. And then once you have Cialis on board, your fluff turns into an erection immediately. So then you're hard. And then you go back to your man and then you're like, oh, hey, baby, I'm already hard for you. Okay. I mean, I get the weird the part problem about me is, yeah, is I'll get hard. Okay. It just doesn't last. Very it's five long. minutes max. Well, because then I'm like, Cialis can't fix that. Well, when you're with a 33 year old, they're like, I want to keep, sorry, no offense, but he's like, yep. I want to keep it going. I want to keep, and I'm like, no, I'm ready to be done. It's been two minutes. I'm done. Thank God when you're with someone who's 44, they're not See, like that. It's like, and we got to just hope to come. Yep. Okay. And that's the secret. Because the, then I get into my head and then I'm. The quicker, the better for me. It's just better than we go watch yeah. our shows. Like, let's go back to living our lives as a settled down, boring seven ass couple. Seven plus years, boring ass couple. Let's go eat some ice cream. Ice cream. Ice cream. No. My ice cream. As you know, uh, Christmas is coming. <sighs> All over my face. Now, are you even like, I want to. I, I have thoughts. On, I was going to share this with you. I'm struggling. Oh, like, same. I'm I, not even, I don't care. I, I'm not going to get anybody anything. No offense. That's okay. That's exactly what I was going to say is the gifts this year. What are we Why? doing? Why? Inflation? Hello. But just but also, also last year I went wild for gifts. And also and what did I get in return? Nothing. I literally and I'm not I'm I spent thousands. Like I'm not But saying, it's about the gift. And I was giving them to it's about the thought that counts or something like that. I don't care. 
Um, and it's not about, I don't need him back, but I just need to feel the spirit back. And right. I didn't get the spirit back from a lot of people. Hmm. So this year it's 55 degrees and rainy. Um, now I thank Matt for this because everything was up when I came thank home and you, I did Matt. love that because I love coming into a Christmas spirity room. So my living room looks Same. great and I love sitting on the couch and looking at Same. it. Same. But also, like, I didn't partake in it, so I didn't really, like, build it up. So maybe that's why Maybe I should partially, have built it. I need to do, like, decorate. Maybe we need to do something little. Like, maybe we need to do, do a craft. Yeah, we have to do a craft. Maybe all we could build, like, we'll gingerbread craft, houses. Yeah. Let's, gifts. Like, yeah, like, I... I, like, I'm thi- I can't even think of gifts. No, like, gifts and, like, I don't even know what I want. No. I don't really care. Are you being asked for lit? My mom, yeah, Matt, I'm, everyone's like, can I get a list? And I'm like, I am trying to think of activities this year. Isn't See, that a good maybe idea? Maybe that's better. Like, give me. I a, said, take me out to dinner. Give me a Delta gift card and call it a day. Oh, that's actually what I got my mom for her birthday. And that. And now she's gonna have to come see me. So, <laughs> did you get that for? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I had here. So, with Christmas coming, my topic this week is gonna be okay about Chris, Chris, Chris Kringle. AKA Santa Claus. And I noticed there's a picture on here yes, of, of I, someone Santa. I wish was. This is Bear Santa. Like, and I have a whole hot. script for us today, if by the Santa way. If Santa came down my chimney looking like that, I wouldn't just kiss him under the mistletoe. I would. Okay, so basically, I, I came up with this, of course, high as fuck. Um, Surprise. Okay. This is, <laughs> yeah. Surprise. Um, Santa Claus and the. This is what I wrote. I'm going to write it. Blah, 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 blah. Santa Claus and the entire lie that you don't want to stop because you don't want your kids to tell other kids that it's not real. So we lie as long as possible. So I was sitting here thinking, I'm like, we all are indoctrinated into this lie because we don't want our kids to be the one that ruins it for other kids in the neighborhood. Okay. So you have to like tell them it's a. I feel like <laughs> I, I, the more I thought about this, I, the more I got pissed. Did you feel like you were being gaslit your entire childhood? Yes, because you are. Okay. You're literally gaslit until you're about 12. And then all of a sudden you're like, oh, nothing's wait, real. Nothing's real. I'm about to be a teenager. The girls are shoving tampons in their vaginas, and I don't even know what a vagina looks like. What? Is, uh, sorry. The, oh, that's horrifying. Well, I just remember this one girl like at oh. school, in elementary school in sixth grade. She was like, I have to go get a tampon. No, she had a tampon, and she goes, this tampon feels like I have a dick in my pussy. This is in sixth grade. Yeah. And I remember being, Wh- and I was like, what? <laughs> oh, Sixth yeah. grade. You're we walking down the hall. I think I was going to like student council. <laughs> a dick in her mm-hmm. pussy mm-hmm. in that grade. Yep. Yep. She didn't know. Okay, good. I, I think was, it was one like, of those things where she was, well, thing? I don't know. Maybe she didn't know. Born and raised. Born and raised, babe. Yeah, she was, and she was, was Southern. Was she a farm girl? Yeah, she was Southern. Oh, so there it is. She might've had a few. She probably has. She just caught a finger. Oh my God. But, but she was like 13. So you hear that and you're like. <laughs> You're like tampon. I was like uh, vagina, dick. Okay, so I just found out about Santa and like all these things, and now like people are talking about dicks and blood, and like we're doing a puberty class, and I'm not growing any hair anywhere. Do you want to know who (sighs) led our puberty class? Who? A priest. That's awkward as fuck. And this priest is the one type that used to, you know, he wait. He would come behind you and rub you. Um, our priest. Wait. One of them got in trouble uh, because he got beer for eighth graders. Um, Why are priests so problematic? <laughs> uh, like, what the fuck? So the, well, they're just. It was a different priest too. Like the one who led our puberty class, like wouldn't answer any questions about sex, obviously, because he's a fucking priest. And but he's, he's not fucking to have the it, boys. But he's fucking the boys in the back. He's like, I don't know um, what straight sex, but I know gay sex. I don't <laughs> know anything about that. Vagina. He what talked about, about asshole. We t- we asked questions about like periods because we were like, and the right. girls were in a separate room. Yep, we were in a separate their, room. Yep. I'm like, why can't we have it together? Like, if you wanted you know, to know about the vagina. Yeah, I was like more interested. I'm like, they seem like their parts are more interesting. Um, I feel like you're drinking. I should be. I'm just tired. I know. So that puberty class went horrible. I mean, as you can imagine, like all he talked about was like deodorant stains on your undershirt. Yes. It like, was so weird. And they and gave I'm you like, a bag of like, yeah. here's deodorant and here's like a razor. toothbrush and a razor. And it's like, I'm like, this taught me nothing about how to jerk off. <sighs> nothing. Then, which, I'm like, nothing important where I'm like, am I supposed to come in my sleep? Like, yeah, no one why told did, me yeah. that. Then it was like, hey, by the way, well, they by did, the way, but they didn't really say the, like, they're like, you'll have a nocturnal emission. What does that mean? What is that? Do you? Uh, oh my God! What was your first? No, do you remember your no, first nocturnal emission? Uh, I remember probably, mine. but I don't remember like what it, happened. I remember my dream, and I remember the after. God, I feel like. So my dream was, um, you know how when you were little, someone like picked you up and. 
put you on their shoulders and you had an awakening? Well, that was my first wet dream. Okay. Frankenstein, mon- the monster, not the scientist who made Frankenstein. That's a technicality that people don't know. Yes. Frankenstein's monster type guy picked me up and put me on his shoulders and was like rubbing. I don't know. Like something was Thank rubbing Thank you, Mary wrong. Shelley. Thank you, Mary Shelley. Shout out to Mary Shelley. Shout out to Mary Shelley for that. So that led to a wet dream emission. And then I'm like waking up in the middle of the night and I'm like, what is happening? And you feel like and you're I, like I felt, humping the, like you feel oh, like, oh yeah. Yeah. I, your body no, it takes had already over. Happened. Right. It had already happened. But like in your dream, you feel like you're. Oh you're yeah. Like, in oh. my dream, I was like, whoa, what's that? Mm-hmm. Then I woke up and freaked out and like went to the bathroom. I was oh, trying to God. clean up the sheets. I was trying to clean up. Then the most horrifying part, I come home from school the next day and I have new sheets on my bed. Okay, we need to hold this. So, hold on, no. <sighs> Fuck, this is one of our... So, somebody asked us a question. Well, we can just edit this behind Well, it. maybe... We'll see. We'll see. Uh, you might. We might have to I come can, back to this. Like, I want to cut it now because of the question that we get. Okay. It's what is the most embarrassing thing that's ever okay. happened? Is that the most embarrassing thing, though? That's not probably. Okay, so then we're fine. So your mom knew that you came in the sheets. Is that what you're saying to me? Well, she knew something happened and got them dirty in a spot where your dick is. Well, and, and that's then she what's really awkward. It's like the why sheets don't, without talking about it. What's really bizarre, though, and I actually almost threw it in the show today, but I, I didn't, like, but now I am. Um, on Yahoo, there was like teaching your kids how to or about masturbation. And I was like, this is weird. But it was like a legit article about like teaching them that it's not shameful and it's not bad and like things are going to happen to your, your bodies <laughs> and lock your fucking door and don't do it for a lot because your penis will slow up and have to show your dad and pretend like you didn't jerk off all day. Um, and he's like, same thing happened to me so I know what you're doing. Teach your kids. Here's to all of our child uh, bearing folk. Um, teach your kids about the body and gays and lenses. Stay away from the kids. Gays. Yeah, gays. Hold up. Because from what I've heard, you're grooming. Okay, so back to Santa Claus. Back to Santa. How did we even get there? I don't know. I don't remember. But it's fine. I'm going to figure it out. So we feel like we're being gaslit. So I we were, was 13, and I was at least 13 when you I stopped older? believing. I was way older. I was like the last person in my class to stop believing in Santa because I wanted to believe in him. Well, like, what did you I feel? Wanted. What did you feel when you found out? Like, what was your first oh, reaction? Like, was it like really bad? Devastation. No, no, wait. At first, devastation. Then... I bought into this and this was the little workaround that I would encourage you to do now. If you still are dealing with this devastation, I know exactly what you're going to say. Now you're believe a in. No, believe in the spirit of Santa, the magic Claus, of Santa, the magic of Christmas, believe in the magic of Christmas. And I still believe in the magic. I'm just, I'm trying to feel it this year, but every other year I feel the magic of Christmas. Interesting. And here's how I know because Matt and I watched a good little Christmas movie. Did you feel it in your heart? I felt in my heart. I teared up watching this movie oh. called eight. Why? Do they always have to have someone die in a Christmas movie nowadays? Well, there's we like an eight, absent mother or the dad had the cancer. The dad like, died in 8-Bit Christmas. It's such a good movie. It's from the 80s. Like, this kid's oh. trying to get Nintendo. It's Neil Patrick Harris as a kid, and he's narrating it. And then his dad, like, is dead as, when he's an adult. And it's like... <laughs> and so then you feel the magic. You feel the upsetness. Um, my cousin's grandma just died, like, two days ago. And so I'm like, another death near Christmas. Another terrible Christmas. This is why as an adult Christmas become it loses the magic but, because yeah. you you think about the loss more than you think about the joy of receiving so, presents. Like as you just went on a whole entire yeah. ring around that's Sorry. exactly what happens to Santa though. Yeah. That's literally what happens you're to like, Santa. Oh Santa, adult, Santa, Santa, Santa. And then you're like, there is no I used Santa. I swear to God, there was like a red light outside the yes. window. I could <gasps> hear him. We would see the sled on I'm the drive saying, home from I grandparents' saw house. It. I saw it. I used we to be like, saw we saw Santa. I used to love to look out the window and be like, <gasps> And it's, it's like a plane, so but fucking, it, it's yeah. a plane. But you're like, it's Rudolph. It could be. It could be. Yeah, could it's, be it's Santa. horrifying. It's honestly, like, why do we do this to our kids? Um, I loved it though. The I'm, thing that I would do it to me my out, kids. Though, well, I mean, you have to because then if you don't, it's they're so going to tell fun. the kids at school. Well, there was a kid who told me at school, and I ignored right, him same. even when I was nine years same. old. So that's why grade. it's like doesn't really matter for the crazy. I found ones. out early, I think, because I was in first grade, and they're like, "You don't believe in Santa? Still do you?" And I was like, "No." I think I was pretty young. See, I went to a Catholic school, so we didn't have as many kids like that. Right. And, and you the were more teachers weren't Jesus. like that. We've kept Christ in Christmas in my school. That's right. And, you and that's it. how it should be. Um, I just remember being stressed out as the oldest child then, knowing and the secret. And I was the oldest too. Yeah. And being like. I hit it. I was like, Rachel, you really need to go to bed. <laughs> no, like we need to stay in our rooms. Like I was so scared she was going to wake up and, get, and catch. My mom's like, shut up. Like. I was so. You were that kid. You were over. I was so nervous that she was going to find out. And actually, when she found out, it was not good. Oh. My dad had to read this. My dad, it was. Go figure. 
she was really upset. My dad like brought this letter out that he had written his mom or something crazy. It was like this whole dramatic <laughs> Christmas magic. God. And I'm like, like, why didn't you show me this when why I found out? Why didn't you out? get a fucking right. letter read why didn't to I get? you? And he, she was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And I'm like, oh, this is horrible. So I was like, I had to feel the so double you whammy. you felt the loss twice. Right, exactly. So that's why I think I, that's at that moment I lost Santa and the spirit. Bah humbug. Wow. I just, so I also wrote down a top five list. Wow. Okay, um, let's see that. Oh my God. Well, this there's has a been top, a bummer today. There's a top five reasons not to tell your children about Santa. Okay. And there's a top, I don't know if we have to read it all, but like Some one of is, these are pretty scientific sounding. Okay. From the bottom. Number one, lying to your child about Santa Claus can undermine their trust in you and damage your relationship. When a child eventually learns the truth, they may feel betrayed by their parents and have difficulty trusting them in the future. Well, point blank period. Uh, Somehow that didn't happen to me though, but okay. number two, the emphasis on material gifts and consumerism that is often associated with the Santa Claus tradition can be damaging as it can teach children to value material possessions over the, over. Thankfully things. that didn't happen to me. Okay. Yeah. Cause I still liked the, my favorite part of Christmas the gifts were second because I always liked putting up the tree more than the gifts. I just like the cookies. I like the, oh, the <sighs> fucking. Because you all get of a like sudden, seven, mom's like, let's make eight, seven, seven, eight different kinds of cookies. Yeah, and you're like, you you're literally like, eat cookies all. Oh, so I can have five cookies a day for long. like three weeks. Oh, I was eating them all. <laughs> Another one. Oh, no, oh, I don't like that one. Though. Now, there was a cookie that my family made that I still to this day hate, and they're called Rocks. They're little like white balls and they have like oh, golden, golden raisins in them. Okay, no, that's that's not it's the same thing I have. Foul. That sounds But really my dad trash. loves them, so we always have to make them. What um, what cookies do you hate? I don't really hate cookies. Um, you're literally like, I can't say I it. literally can't even think like what was your coconut? Least favorite cookie. Like a coconut. Yeah. Something. If it's all coconut. I like a little yeah, coconut I like with little, chocolate. Like we had today. Like that one we had today is like. <laughs> we had a Christmas cookie today. Okay, we had um, a fucking Christmas cookie. We celebrated we Christmas. Like, I didn't even think of that, but we yeah, did just have did. a fucking cookie. But it had a little light. It had a little oatmeal and a little light. Uh, it was so. It good. has to be a combo cookie. Yeah, for no, me. It, same. Okay. Um, um, the tradition of Santa Claus can create unrealistic expectations in children. When children believe in Santa, they may expect to receive a large number of expensive gifts, which may not be. I think the AI bot, AI bot failed here because that's like the same as this materialistic one. Well, sort of, but the, the other okay. one is it's basically saying like not all families kids, can though, celebrate, right? So like, oh, how I come do remember Santa, the, right? Oh. So how come some Santas that brought sixty-five thousand things well, and he, I got four? Or Here, you know what I mean? Here's where I struggled. We were donating presents every year at the church to put under the tree in front of the church uh, we had to for do, the we had poor to, kids. Oh, do you have to pick you like the little thing off? And yeah, it's like and five like, year old oh, kid. Sucks. Let's give him uh, yeah. a truck. Yep. And I was like, Mom, why are we getting presents for this five year old? And then she was like, well, this is just to help them out because Santa doesn't like poor people. Sometimes their aunts <laughs> and uncles and godparents and grandparents can't give them gifts. And I was like, oh, OK. It's really fucked so up. I, thought, I was like, okay. so there you go, gaslit. Um, <laughs> number four, the Santa Claus tradition can exclude children who do not celebrate Christmas. Oh, for example. this is too woke for me. Okay, we can move on to the next for one. Par for children who are part of other religious traditions, do you not celebrate? Well, they might feel left out when their classmates Honestly, are talking about Santa Claus. Then fuck off. <laughs> Oh wow, the magic spirit is fucking back. If you don't believe in white Santa, <laughs> I just like yeah. Honestly, like why can't I, my mom said Santa visited every child? So regardless of Christian, but Christianity this is what's so not. fucked up though is like. But then some people didn't really do Santa Claus. So then it's like, and how do you explain? I felt so bad for those fucking. We had some Indian kids in my neighborhood. Oh. We don't celebrate Christmas. I'm like, oh Why? no. So Santa just skips over. But your we house? also had Indian an Indian family in our neighborhood where one year I was trying to sell chocolate bars for charity Ugh. and the mom goes, we don't believe in chocolate. We don't believe in believe. chocolate. I was like, believe I go, I turned There's, to my mom. I was like, mom, what I'm is, holding the chocolate bar and she doesn't believe in it. What does believe mean? Like they didn't believe in eating it, but you know, English has a second language. So I was like, you know, for those kids who didn't believe in Christmas, I was like, that's so sad. Oh, I'm sorry. And then you had the Jewish kids. You were like, oh, why do you get stuff for eight I don't nights? Like eight nights what about of present? Santa? They're like, well, we don't get big presents every night. I'm like, it's and then still Santa eight still nights. comes. It's like, and then Santa always came. I can't. Jews were double dipping back then. Um, okay, uh, number five, the Santa Claus tradition can reinforce gender stereo. These AI bots it can reinforce gender stereotypes. The traditional can, image though. of Santa Claus as a white male old man can reinforce harmful gender yeah. and racial <laughs> stereotypes. I can't believe you're not off your foot. You love bots so much. You love the idea of technology so much that you're ignoring the fact that if this were written by a human, I'm like, you, you would ignore woke, it. Son you of a fucking bitch. asshole. No, I'm you actually. You would hate it. You would fucking hate it. 
This sounds like something Demi really... Lovato would write, and you're just like, <laughs> yeah, you know what? Yeah, well, yeah, if the bot really says can. It, if the chat if bot, bot says, it, says it, you're like, I did a whole one for why you should, but I don't think we've already covered it. Yeah, <laughs> like it's a tradition to teach kids about value. <laughs> I cannot. I cannot. You're like, oh, wow. wow. Gender and racial stereotypes. Yes. <laughs> I love this. I love this. Then I'm like, fuck off. Then I'm like, him, her. I don't ever. Him and her. We're not saying them. Fuck off, Demi Lovato. I was like, yeah. but this, you're like, oh, it's a bot. Wow, that's this. really great. It's very creative. And you're like, what the fuck? I cannot Usually believe. it's the opposite reaction. I know. That's why I love this. Okay. Okay. So basically, uh, to wrap up Santa Claus, I mean, it's kind of like God for me. Um, yeah. Like, why are we believing I'm in it? I'm still waiting for the day my mom's like, well, God isn't real. Just say no. But like, that's their <laughs> What life. if when you hit 45, oh God. your parents are like, God's not real. We're faking for the kids. Or like on their death, but they all write a little letter like, and then you get a letter, and the, but you're not supposed to tell that them. That would morning. be so fucking amazing. I would lose it. Well, then you're like, okay. And then so, like someone leaks the letter from their parents. And right. Like, so every year, hey, everybody everyone, finds out when their parent dies, but you can't God's know until your parent real. dies. And my mom tell. told me, my 85 year old mother told me God's not real. But then you have those people that see all those like ghosts or whatever. The people that are like, oh, Aunt Larry's here. And you're like, or Uncle Larry's here. And you're like, <laughs> I just felt her spirit touch my titty. Like the what? person that's dying. You're like, mom. She brushed against me. Oh, fuck. My tits are puffy tonight. Like, oh, really? I mean, I feel like a little puffy. They're a little, I love they're that. little chubby. You're ready to come. Okay. Okay. So we're on to your topic now. Thank you, Santa Claus, for doing nothing and ruining our lives. Thank you, Santa. Shout out to Santa. Um, I'm not remembering my topic. So just that's fine. We can do a little intermission. In the meantime, make sure you call and subscribe. Look at the number here. It's floating hey, down. The number here. 614. <laughs> yada, 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 yada. And for the audio listeners, um, <laughs> I really don't know. And for the audio listeners, we don't know our number. So I have it somewhere, but I just don't know where. Um, okay. This was my thing. Well, can I say something really quick before we keep going? Our number is 614-721-5336. That's 614-721-5336. That's what I was going to say. And you said 55. Five. It's because of the weed. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> now on to Jim. Thank you. Okay. So this is like some positive news. Um, wow. I know. Isn't that? <laughs> well, for us, um, there is a restaurant in Virginia that refused service to a Christian group that they realized was trying to plan a holiday event at their restaurant because they're crazy conservatives and they hate LGBTQ people. Huh. And so the restaurant said, no, you're not welcome here. Go somewhere else. <laughs> Go to fucking Chick-fil-A, bitch. Go fuck off, really. And that gave me life. That rejuvenated me, honey. <laughs> I mean, we should it's all going be, full circle. We need to be doing this. It's going, we're being persecuted. You want to be persecuted? I'll show Fine. you persecute. Don't come to our restaurants. Don't come to our bars. Don't come to our districts. Like, stay away Leave from us. Leave us alone. Go to your Leave church suppers. Alone. Like, stay at your fish fries. Like, we don't want you around us anyways. If you're a crazy Christian, stay away. Bye-bye. Cry about it later. And you're going to be very... <laughs> it's going to be very interesting when yeah. we get to the... the um, people's questions for us in the anonymous group because there oh, are really? some things about religion as well yeah um but did you hear about this little matt showed it to me and i was like wait what and then I'm, now i'm like we should all be doing this well honestly get rid of them it's just like us carrying ar-15s to the yeah. to sunday school if you're gonna come to our churches that are, we have drag story times at and um, you're gonna come with guns and why don't we just show up with guns and be like you're doctrinating your kids to believe we should go to their churches with ar-15 no we should just go to santa Hider. claus at the mall oh my god you're indoctrinating children. you're indoctrinating your kids santa's not real santa's, santa's not, not real. real our santa is though gay santa's real gay santa's real it's a drag queen dressed up as a man <laughs> God, like, I just don't get it. Why are you going to see these drag queens? Santa is dressed up wearing a yeah, beard Santa with rosy drag. makeup and a big fake belly. Here's what I think it is. Santa's in drag. Just real quick. I think the problem with the drag thing is that they don't know what drag really means. Like they think it's oh. like all the, they see drag queen. They think RuPaul. They think, which is maybe, but that's like fair. a lot of drag queens are just like not. I don't know. It's really cool. They're creative people. I and think it's about just that. Like, they're creating things for yeah, the community. Like you go to these shows and you're like, I could not do this. I couldn't come no. up with this many costumes, I this couldn't many walk skits, out and be like this many shows, this many different dances to this dance, music. It's the dances for me. It's, I'd I, be like, oh yeah. I'd be like the fat one in the back, like mm, mm, I know mm, I can't mm, dance. So like me either. The community is amazing, and that's why we need it. Is because they drive creativity. Like remember the 
the heyday of Nina West before she forgot about Columbus. And she was doing like the <laughs> the Christmas shows, the Halloween shows, the East. Like those shows were incredible. I know. We, we need talked about this. We again. need you back. We need we those need back again. Okay. We need full scale production. But the, the straight people think that drag queens are like stripping. They think I know. Like they a, think they're literally like, like it's never sexual. By like, the way, they're not. seeing Taylor Swift and they're like, yeah, they're lip sync. Not singing. Sinking. <laughs> I was like lip syncing. Sinking, like syncing up with you. I always want to say lip singing. singing. Same. Is that a problem? No, I think everybody. Why can't does. we change it? We can. Okay. Well, good. Lip singing. Let's so anyway, circle back. Circling like, back to the Jesus folk. The Jesus folk. They've got to go. Like I'm tired of hearing of them. So are you? Do you have any tolerance at all anymore for anybody Christian? Um, if they keep it to themselves, if they practice their religion in silence and I don't hear about it, if they go to their church and never talk about it, if they never try to convert anyone, if they don't like indoctrinate their children and prevent their children from experiencing the world and realizing that there's a shit ton of other belief systems that work just as well for the other billions of people who don't practice Christianity, then I'm okay with those Christians. If they're the Christians who are like, no, this is my way or the highway. You have to be like this. Fuck off. Goodbye. We don't want to hear from you anymore. <laughs> We're done. We're done with Christianity in that form. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, I agree. I agree with you in ways. I'm just. Um, I've been thinking about more and more how fed up I am with Christianity in this country. They're trying to force their belief system on everyone in this country, and you want to know? I know one wants to go to church anymore, and you're wondering, my, oh, we the youth have been corrupted. No, the youth are just sick and fucking tired of crazy Christians of your corruption. Yeah, like your corruption. We're witnessing it. You have all these pastors flying around in private jets. You have pastors having affairs with their trainers. You have a. I mean, it's like. It's corrupt. Well, he's he's it's part of the Lord's. He's the Lord's. It, yeah. uh, American Christianity man. is corrupt. We are sick of it. American Christianity isn't really Christianity. It's, it's more not. of a political. It's movement. about it's a political movement for power, and it's about money. It's about the patriarchy. It's about controlling women. So no, Here's I don't. I don't like American me, Christianity. Just to touch on it, just slightly, let me get to the news. Yeah, I I don't understand. Oh no, I forgot what I was going to say. No, no. It's, it's American there. Christianity, Christians. No. <laughs> you don't understand why people who are Christian do something you don't. Pastors, oh you don't understand. We were talking about Christianity. We were talking about raising. I literally. I'm really remember. trying here. I'm like all the I know, topics we you're, talked about. I know it's kind of like minutes. it's kind of giving me anxiety. Cause I'm like, what was I about to say? Here's the thing for me. I really can't. What would you say? I'm trying to think. What would you say? You really can't with Christians or something was, they do? I don't know. Or American something they did. Christians? Yeah, I can't remember now. It was so good, too. I'm really sorry, everyone. <sighs> These Christians. Um, so basically... I remember! I remember! I remember. Okay. I love this. Did you just forget so, no, Okay. No, so I can go up to a Christian and go, God spoke to me. And he <laughs> told me that I'm supposed to be a homosexual. How do they discredit that? <laughs> I cannot. But how do you discredit that? I had a vision from God. He but came why, to me. How can you dis? How can you discredit that when you're saying the same thing? Well, God said to me. Well, that this is the funniest part. Is like Mormons basically made up a new book of the Bible. They said they found it in upstate New York and buried it out of the unburied it from the ground. And we're like, this is a New Testament of Jesus. <laughs> like, why can't you find a I New can't. Testament that's like, yeah, gays are everything, and we lo Jesus loves gays. Like, why can't we make up a New Testament just like the Mormons did? That was only like we 150 can. years That's ago. That's what's going to happen. That's what I'm saying. He's like, all of this shit is so pretend. It's like, <laughs> it's in the book. Well, there's what also like book? comic books with uh, superheroes in right. them. Does that make superheroes real? Listen, uh, Game of Thrones <laughs> is a really great series. It's a, it's a book. I, so it I believe real. that. Yeah. Over God. I believe dragons flew around at some point. I do too. Because there were pterodactyls that literally look like dragons. Right. So, so they were real. Oh, but dinosaurs didn't exist. Oh no. God put them there to trick us. Um so Gay the, News. Gay news. The Respect for Marriage Act. Yeah. So it, it forces all states to recognize to be to recognize federal marriage. Federally. Federally. So the they problem don't have to do is state. the thirty four or thirty five states that still outlaw gay marriage. If a burger fell, if the Supreme is Court ever, decision yeah. is dropped, overturned, and it goes back to the states, then those 35 states, you they don't have to issue licenses to gay couples to say or to same sex couples. So <sighs> this law makes if you went to Connecticut and got married, if you went to Illinois and got married, then Ohio would have to recognize our marriage correct, here. Correct. So it's almost like abortion. <laughs> well, yeah. If this comes it's even down more to fucked it, fucked up. I, I just. Yeah. You it's know, just a disaster. But it, the problem is that it lets all these religious groups discriminate against us. And it, it's like, whatever. 
Big, no, no, big deal. But again, I feel like we just need to turn on we them and discriminate. Care. We're we gonna go to honestly don't oh, care. Midnight Mass. Well, guess what? We're gonna be out there with <laughs> pitchforks and. Um, oh my god, we should. Why not? We. Why what? aren't we doing that? Queers need to rise need to, up. Yeah, we're. I'm start a revolution. The problem is and Obama this. and Michelle. Yeah. really brought us down to earth, and we, we were like, "This is the greatest life ever." And then when we and go then, low, yeah, when, when they go, go low, low, higher. When they no, go low, we go. I'm high. going lower than Listen, fuck. Michelle. I'm going to the goddamn <laughs> depths of the earth. Yeah, low. It's not working. Going not high working. has never worked. Look around, because Mitch around. McConnell is going to go lower, God, so that we that can't go higher. Bobby can. I mean, barely. Now, barely... The, the greatest thing that came from the vote was, first of all, there was a lot of Republicans that actually did vote yes to it. So, like, thank you for those. Dumb I wouldn't people. say a lot out of the 200. Some of them, I think it's like less than 40. But sure. I know. So anyway, <laughs> 39 of their 200 some members voted yes. So one of the representatives decided she was going to cry. OK, <laughs> and this is now so good. Um, you're never going to believe the video I found. So get ready. OK. OK. Now, honestly, are you ready? We ate. Today, a United States Congresswoman, my Aunt Vicky, started crying because gay people like me can get married. I hope and pray that my colleagues will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided and this dangerous bill. I yield back. So despite coming out to my aunt this past February, I guess she's still just as much as a homophobe. Let's be clear, Obergefell is not in danger, but people and institutions of faith are. Aunt Vicky, that's not right. Institutions of faith like religious universities are not being silenced. They're being empowered by the US government to discriminate against tens of thousands of LGBTQ students because of religious exemptions but they still receive federal funding. The bill's implications, submit to our ideology or be silenced. It's more like you want the power to force your religious beliefs onto everyone else. And because you don't have that power, you feel like you're being silenced, but you're not. You're just gonna have to learn to coexist with all of us. And I'm sure it's not that hard. I need to see another angle, but he's, he's cute. cute. <laughs> And Vicky. And Vicky. We want to fuck your yeah. hu husband. husband and, your, and nephew. your nephew. I mean, I mean, I she's could not crying. have found she's a crying. better. That's such a good clip. At first, I was going to do Did just you the... get the Caleb clip. Oh, I fuck. fucking love that. Wait, was it on Instagram? Oh no! I oh. hope it's still there. Will find the courage to join me in opposing this misguided. And this dangerous bill. Married. I mean, <laughs> like we're gonna be dancing to this in the gay club. I hope. This dangerous. We bill. should. I, this I mean. Kind of bill. <laughs> so, are you gonna screen play that? Yes, I have to. Okay, yeah. Make sure you get that to me. So, regardless, we're thankful for the progress that was made, but also, I really just am so fucking sick and tired of all you bitches <laughs> bitching and shit. I mean, fucking ridiculous. Okay. <laughs> cannot fucking do it okay okay so continue on with the god talk because that's what seems to be happening in this country <clears throat> there's too many big words okay words. you just sounded like kind of slurry <laughs> too many big words too many words i think your hearing is slurry <laughs> i actually think i might need hearing aids yeah. <laughs> oh my god i'm serious you can get over the counter now <laughs> yeah but okay i can't <laughs> They're like six thousand dollars for good ones. Oh. Matt's were almost seven thousand dollars. So that's why it's like, oh, over the counter, great. So <laughs> I'm you looking don't, for the twenty five dollars. Like, so you don't need a prescription, but they're still fucking expensive if they're good. Mm. Yeah, mm. I had to pay seven thousand dollars for Matt's hearing aids last year. Seven thousand. Thankfully, my, I had it. My eyes twitching. Okay. <laughs> what does that mean? That I'm uh, nothing. I need a banana. I need a fucking banana. I feel a cramp coming on. Fetch me a banana, daddy. Oh. That's an actual quote from someone I knew growing up. Oh, uh, it sounds like Family Guy. It sounds like Stewie or whatever. I feel a cramp coming on. Fetch me a banana, daddy. I'm not even fucking kidding. She said that in our house and my siblings and I all burst out laughing at her and she started crying because we started laughing at her. I mean, if her gonna... dad was in the kitchen and then she was like, daddy, I feel a cramp coming on. Fetch me a banana, daddy. And it's like, the fuck? The fuck, Carol? Literally, you feel a cramp coming. Okay, anyways. All right. Woman accused of sabotaging electrical grid to stop drag show says extremist leftist did it. 
And first she said it was God, but now that the police have left, she's changing her tune. Amber Rainey, a former Army psychological operations officer. Scary. Yikes. Has claimed that Christophobic activist and aggressive leftist sabotaged power lines in Moore County, North Carolina in order to cause a blackout during a drag show. Why would, why would, <laughs> why would they do, do that? that? They love drag right. shows. It makes no sense. Rainey was previously investigated by the army after leading a group to the rally in Washington that led to the January 6th Capitol insurrection. Weird. Oh, the same psychopaths. She claimed that the blackout was caused by activists who were opposed to the drag show. Rainey said she was questioned by the local sheriff's office about her claims. She went on to far right podcast as a guest to discuss. So basically this dumb bitch <laughs> like cut the power grid. Ruined it for caught, how many people in it, winter. In winter, and, oh yeah, and then and in, and in like, the article it said like it went below thirty and shit, like yeah, and then was like, God told me to do it, and then she's like, just kidding, leftist did leftist it, leftist did it. What is it, honey? What, what is which it? Which one is it? Like, and once again, there you go. God told me. So all her Christian friends are like, oh okay. Like what is it? <laughs> like what is it? And of course she was at the fucking Capitol insurrection, like. <laughs> Insurrection Barbie. We're going to stop this drag show. Yeah. Okay. Again. By cutting the power for. If you've ever been to a drag show. like people? They're literally just up there like just standing there. And by the way, they probably them. don't need power. People will turn on Honestly. their like flashlights on their cell phones. Also, and we're gay. Keep dancing. Like we used to have to live in under power. No yeah. power. <laughs> we used to, have to be in the. In we were the, in caves. In the depths. <laughs> okay. So uh, continuing on this journey of Christianity and gay people. Kurt Cameron whines that libraries refuse his biblical book events while allowing LGBTQ programs. <laughs> Kirk Cameron, a former teen actor and Christian conservative activist, has published a children's book called As You Grow, which teaches biblical wisdom. Over 50 public libraries in the U.S. have rejected so the we're offer starting to, like, really... to host storytime events reading his book. The publisher Brave Books said that public libraries have become indoctrination centers that refuse to allow biblical wisdom to be taught to our children. <laughs> Cameron supported former President Donald Trump in 2016 and made headlines in 2012 for anti-LGBTQ comments. His sister is also in hot water for her remarks about the LGBTQ plus community last month. So Candace Cameron's brother now wants to get on the action. <laughs> so let's say you want to host a drag time story hour with seven year olds. You obviously can use your public library for that, but you can't read a book about God at a public library. And the actor Kirk Cameron just learned that. Dozens of public libraries refuse to give him a slot to speak to kids about his new faith-based book called As You Grow. One Rhode Island library told him, quote, we are a very queer-friendly library. Our messaging does not align. <laughs> okay, Kirk Cameron joins us tonight. Kirk, thanks so much for coming on. Um, so they wouldn't let you read this book? This book was banned in libraries? How controversial is this book? Well, it, it's a book that teaches biblical wisdom through the seasons of life to children and the value of growing the fruit of the spirit, like love, joy, kindness, patience, gentleness, self-control. And I wanted to do a book reading at a public library and I was denied by over 50 woke libraries that have hosted drag queen story hours. Uh, one of the most outrageous denials was uh, Alameda County Public Library that said they didn't want that book teaching kids biblical values um, while at the same time they're hosting a gender name change clinic tomorrow. And I'm thinking, wow, if uh, we're so committed to diversity, why am I being excluded? Why can't I use your facility to read my book? You're a library. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, so we began the show with a story about how the president of Ukraine has banned a Christian religion in Ukraine. And then we get to your story where the libraries ban your book. So the thread here appears to be fear and hatred of Christianity. Why do you think a religion based on peace and tolerance, turning the other cheek, not showing vengeance is so scary? Well, I, my understanding of history is that the family and the church are two great pillars of Western civilization. And those two things need to be removed and taken out of the way in order to fundamentally change the power structure and the moral value code of the nation. And that's why parents are fighting back. In fact, Tucker, hundreds of parents and librarians 
are now emailing us saying, we want your book and we want to host our own Brave Book Story Hour in our public library. So here's my call to action. I want every parent and every grandparent in America to get their favorite children's story book, my book or other Brave Books, or a book of the Bible. Call your local public library that has hosted a Drag Queen Story Hour and say, I'd like the chance to read my book in the library. And if they say no, they're likely breaking the law and violating the Constitution, and they can contact bravebooks.com. We'll give them free books and all that they need to turn that denial into a revival in their community. And to Christians particularly, we often get told no in the public square. We go home with our tail between our legs, crying in our Chick-fil-A soup, waiting for the rapture, rather than getting on the offense and saying, let's invest in our children and teach them the values we want them to learn. By the way, I knew he'd done this. He's so and hot, he, though. He was. Oh, he's sorry. Is he, he still? Was always, is he still? Yeah, he's like daddy Shit. hot. That's fucking sucks. It's fucked up. Because it you know he's sucking dicks. Or getting his sucked. Like, trust me. Oh, yeah. He's probably like, I can't suck yours, but you can suck mine. The Lord, right. Lord would like I have that. to look to heaven while you do it, but take this cock. I'm going to pretend like you're God sucking my Lord, cock. Lord, let like, me come in his hot, wet throat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's Kirk's prayer. Wow. Let's say Kirk's prayer together. Lord. Lord. Let, Let me come, me come in, in his, his hot, hot wet, wet throat. throat. Kirk's prayer. Thank you. Okay. But Kirk Cameron, I have a little story about that. Um, when I was... You masturbated to him. No, when I was indoctrinated... This is more embarrassing. <laughs> I can't believe I, I can't believe I've never told you this. Oh, my God. This is horrifying. Oh, so you probably like met him and had a fucking whole conversation with oh, him. Oh, I would have. So back when I was Christian... <laughs> oh, wow. Is that um, you sang in church? <laughs> Uh, support that low back baby when you're pregnant. More the You've got to support. Oh, fuck. So back when I was a Christian and fully indoctrinated by my parents in church, you want to talk about grooming? I still like you guys. But. Um, I got into this rapture series called Left Behind, which was fully promoted by <laughs> Kurt Cameron and written by like something LeHue. And, Probably his dumb sister. Uh, there were books this big. I'm talking like two two inch books, like thick, long books, and there were like seven or eight of them. And you were being. Do you know bullied. what the rapture is? Yeah, the end of the world. Like when Jesus comes the and trumpet, they and, take away. Mm. No, like God takes the souls of the good people away. And all, the rest are left and all and that's like, left are the people that need to either be saved or the bad people, the Antichrist. And I literally read like six books <laughs> about this so called rapture from the Book of Revelation, but set in a modern day world. And I remember Kirk, Kirk Cameron like promoted these books. What's wrong? I was just like, you know, you're good. Oh, no. I was like, if you tell me. I was trying to find a funny. I was like, I will kill you. Oh, yeah. Um, literally kill you. Because um, this will be a good episode. It's um, going to be great. So, yeah, I read these Rapture books and I was like enjoying them. But Kirk always loved them and promoted them. And, and that's, you, how I, that's how I remember Kirk so that's Cameron. Kirk Cameron. To me, it's like, oh, I remember he's a psychopath. Like, I know he's crazy. Because you jumped on that train. But isn't it funny that these public libraries are like, you know what? Fuck the bullshit. And now he's like, oh. Oh my God! Again, what first, if you what just left biblical, everybody? Listen, what's biblical wisdom. First of all, I have no idea. Oh, we're we gonna talk about the fact that uh, he tried to drown the whole world except for Noah because he listened to him. Or how about the fact that we have to cut off our our kids' dicks so that we're like Abraham? Or how about like I mean <laughs> Adam and Eve? They're like he's like here's knowledge, but just kidding. I'm can't done. Eat, can't eat that fruit, or you're going to. Well, now you're kicked uh, out. Well, now you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna die. We're gonna make you bear children to make it hurt. We're Thanks, gonna, God. Oh, yeah, he was, He really did say he that. He says like, that. It's gonna so hurt. So let's do this Bible wisdom. Why do we like him? What? Just question. So anyway, I thought that was a very interesting I love situation. It. Because I love it's it. almost like the same thing, though, as like, like we need to start pushing back. This we is a do. pushback. Fuck and we you. are. And honestly, like Gen Z doesn't care either. We're so dumb with religion. Yeah, we really are. All of Europe is too. Like, no one's going to church anymore. Thank God. Oh, okay. So we asked for, well, obviously we've been promoting to call us. Uh, we don't have any calls yet, but we will have some calls. Maybe one day. Positive, um, positive thinking. But we did have our anonymous uh, line on Instagram where they can write us and we don't know who wrote it. Okay. So I got three. Oh, I like those. Okay, let's see. Yeah. So I got three things. The first one, I got more than three, but these are the three best ones. This whole religion thing. I So I asked, what's making you not well? Okay. This whole religion thing. You guys should check out the video, Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus. I feel so, like we would love Jesus. Okay, so here's the thing. I think I know who wrote this. Okay. So how are you taking that? Is it the bisexual? No, I don't think so. Okay. But how are you taking that when you read that? Are you taking yeah, it the sure. way I, mean, I am? Why I hate religion. Um, I feel like they're saying, yeah. we're tired of you guys talking about religion. 
Oh, I no, oh, I think they mean, I think they mean they hate religion. Okay, well, but maybe. they love Jesus, and that's that's my thing is that's I'm fine. fine with spirituality. Me too. Me too. But religion, where they organize you and try to make you have group think and like teach you to hate the others, indoctrinate, reli- you, indoctrinate gaslight you, you, gaslight you. Like religion is trash, but spirituality yeah. is fine with me. If you find meaning in Jesus and you're one of the good Christians, like an actual Christian, and you don't want to convert other people and push it on other people. Then fine. Then fine. Be a Christian. So I think that would be an interesting video. So I'm just going to play the beginning just to see. Just. What if I told you Jesus came to abolish religion? What if I told you voting Republican really wasn't his mission? What if I told you Republican doesn't automatically mean Christian, and just because you call some people blind doesn't automatically give you vision? I mean, if religion is so great, why has it started so many wars? Why does it build huge churches but fails to feed the poor? Tell single moms God doesn't love them if they've ever had a divorce, but in the Old Testament, God actually calls religious people whores. Religion might preach grace, but another thing they practice, tend to ridicule God's people, they did it to John the Baptist. They can't fix their problems and so they just mask it, not realizing religion's like spraying perfume on a casket. See, the problem with religion is it never gets to the core. It's just behavior modification like a long list of chores. Like, let's dress up the outside, make it look nice and neat. But it's funny, that's what they used to do to mummies while the corpse rots underneath. Now I ain't judging, I'm just saying, quit putting on a fake look. Because there's a problem if people only know that you're a Christian by your Facebook. I mean, in every other aspect of life, you know that logic's unworthy. It's like saying you play for the Lakers just because you bought a jersey. See, this was me too, but no one seemed to be on to me. Acting like a church kid while addicted to pornography. See, on Sunday I'd go to church, but Saturday getting faded acting if I was simply created to just have sex and get wasted. See, I spent my whole life building this facade of neatness, but now that I know Jesus, I boast in my weakness. Because if grace is water, then the church should be an ocean. It's not a museum for good people, it's a hospital for the broken. Which means I don't have to hide my failure, I don't have to hide my sin. Because it doesn't depend on me, it depends on him. I mean, he's also okay. He's not wrong, and he's hot. Um, so I would listen. So we're gonna listen to we're that. We're gonna listen to that for sure. And do, we'll do, definitely do, 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 do. thank you for writing us. Think, and I think that's true. I think it was I quite like, positive. I, like that. I took it as like someone was like, no, I've seen it. I'm it tired is. of the whole religion thing. Like you guys are. Well, we're not gonna talk about it forever. It's just that it keeps it coming just keeps up, coming up. Like leave all us alone. The time. Like, if you leave us alone, we'll leave you we alone. Asked, you can go read your Bible, wholesome fucking shit. If we can yeah, go read our drag queen, go to show. your prayer circle. But we asked for equal rights, and then we have representatives crying because it's going to be terrible for the good. So we have just, to talk about I it. I love her nephew. If we don't fucking talk about it, people like her run the narrative. So we have to fucking talk about religion. Anyways. The next question we got was most embarrassing thing you've ever done. Ooh. And I had to think really hard about this because there's a few things that come to mind. Yeah. The that's... most recent though was me um, sharding in the bathroom while I was throwing up in the toilet right before our Austin trip when I got something yep. that oh, was the yep. antibiotics and michael was standing there watching me as i'm literally sharding and throwing up that's so that's pretty fucking embarrassing i mean I, you know it's love though when you don't care that he sees you either though and he doesn't care either he went and got his gloves and like helped me clean and threw away my underwear he was really sweet so i need to buy gloves yeah what we if need this to, happens to matt you need gloves because he has blowouts at baseline if he right. ever gets so if sick, he gets a real it'll, blowout it'll be all over the wall I mean, i've never been so sick as that week I really have never like I. Threw, I know I, you. You kept me up to date, up to the minute on that. I was like, threw up again. I remember you're like, I'm, I'm sharding. I just threw well, up. Well, I diarrhea four my, times. And I'm like, you're okay. like, cool. You're like, I just shit my pants. I was like, okay, Great, please stop. Talking. I believe it. I believe it. Just go lay down. I was like, lay down. Um, <laughs> another thing that came to mind for me was uh, when Nina West called me on stage on the little stage. It was on the little stage <laughs> at Axis. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So there yeah, was people yeah. in there, and she goes, Bobby, come on up, and did it, and she. That was in. a perfect Nina voice, by the way. That was weird. Hey, Nina West here. <laughs> Bobby, come on up. Like, so it was like either lip sync or dance or rap or something. And I was stood there and I was like, I don't want to do this. And I had to like, I was like, come help me, please. I was like telling other people to come up. I did not want to do it. I've had to do a so dance off. That was pretty there. embarrassing. So that yeah, was like embarrassing. I've done the dance off there. It was pretty, yeah. But people like, rooted for me right we were rooting for you we were rooting for you and you and fucking actually failed. i won the dance oh. off well. when abortia brought me up at bosco's <laughs> abortia is the person that gave me my first ever massage i'm sorry what i didn't know that oh abortia never told me this abortia's hands so i need oh my god i wonder because i always see her posting and i'm like yes I? she gives a fucking mat i mean very respectful 
It was at, she used to work at uh, Open Day Spa right by your house. Oh, yeah. And, or wherever you live. Oh, and, good God. So I need her over like ASAP. Yeah. So I think she has like private clients. Does she now. go to houses? Your own house? I don't know, but she might do that now. I think Does she, she also own. offer. I don't know if we don't okay. Know. I'm, I'm sure. Okay. Um, um, do you have an embarrassing moment? Yeah, probably when I, I've told you this, when I was at that fucking sleepover with four other boys and I peed on the ground of the dad's office under his desk. And then the next day they were like, I think Andrew peed. Why is it always peeing or shitting that is most embarrassing? Because we're taught to be embarrassed by our body functions. I mean, duh, from the, yeah. From the start. Yeah. Okay. Okay. This says. This is a random comment. Okay. This says not well couple moving back to the USA. My husband and I moved to Iceland in search of a more peaceful life. Due to work permit issues and the fact that my master's program got cut, we moved back to the USA on Saturday. There are multiple layers to why the whole situation is not making us well. It's making us not well. Oh, no. So I just want to say to you. Uh, they had um, to move back to the U.S. from Iceland. I'm really right? sorry because Iceland is a place I want to go with the drone now. I know. <laughs> and all my cameras and all the equipment. Oh, I mean, we could just drive could around. Could you imagine if we did an episode with Wait. the mountains in the background? Yeah. Maybe we should go to Iceland on our next trip. Absolutely. It's actually pretty gay there, too, I think. It, yes. <gasps> and then it was very expensive, but. I didn't think it was that expensive. Oh, it's terrible. A, a hamburger is like $30. <laughs> I mean, because every food well, is everything imported. Is, ew, it's shipped gross. in. <laughs> Except for some things, but like most gross. of it's brought in. The seafood, I'm sure, is fine. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, so, uh, unfortunately, I'm very sorry that that's happening to you. Uh, I would say welcome back to the United States. I don't know where you live, but if you're in Columbus, you can hit us up and we'll welcome buy back. you a drink. I mean, I don't really know. I'm really sorry. I hope you didn't want health care. <sighs> welcome back. Hopefully, whatever happened with your program. Do you like guns? To- welcome back. How about religion? We just talked about 45 minutes. How does minutes racism about it. sound to you? Welcome back. So we'd like to just actually apologize. Yeah, completely. I, I don't know how to welcome you here. I'm really okay. sorry. Um, sundries. Sundries. Okay. You're going to have to go first because I've been talking a lot. I've got a sun. I've been talking a shit ton. Uh, we'll see. When I went off t- on religion, well, yeah, it's I was going nuts for oh, a you while. Went nuts. Yeah. You went nuts. And Santa, too. Uh, honey, Santa. we've been sharing. We've been sharing the stage. Santa. Okay, so. Sharing the stage. I'm on the outside. I'm on the no, no. Hi, Sundry. Uh, and this, <laughs> this will be shared by many. <laughs> I experienced it on the way over. Is it cars again? Well. God, everything is a fucking car for you. But go ahead. I'm sure it's a great one. Okay. You know when you're (laughs) about to get on the highway Mm -hmm. or about to turn onto a road that has an on-ramp on it, and you're like, okay, I'm getting ready. I'm ready to go. And you don't. You look up, Mm. and you're behind a truck or a bus. Mm -hmm. And you know they're going to get on the fucking highway going 25, 30 miles, 30 per, miles hour. Yep. per hour. Yep. And you're going to get ran. <laughs> and you're merging yep. onto people flying by at 70. And all you're trying to do is get over one or two lanes, maybe. And you can't. And, and you then almost, you're stuck. And you're stuck. And then they're trying to get over, so they slow down even more. And you're like. And you almost miss your it's exit. It's literally like a disaster. It's like, why can't people merge at the speed they're supposed to merge at? Actually, That's all I need to ask. And then it, even when I'm behind a car and I'm like, why are we going 40 to try to get on someone going 70? And you're just going to get over going 40 and then people are like, Arr! I'm like, these people are not taught how to drive on the highway. Like, You've got to, you have you to have go to accelerate. the speed you have of to the accelerate. people you're merging with. You need to be at least at 55. That's the I minimum. Have, and that's 55 still slow. minimum, agree. And if that's you still slow. punch it, when you start getting I on go. Ramp, I go. So do I. You I need to go. Up. Get up to 65, bitch. But I can't speed up when I'm behind a fucking bus. Yeah. They need their own on ramps. They need their own entrances and exits off the highway. I'm tired of trucks. I'm tired. Oh my God. It's everything so, sucks. And it's just going to get worse and worse. It's the thing just, is, is that we're all trapped now yeah. in these highway systems. Yeah, like, how we do are. we get more? Yeah. We're going to have to do double deck highways, is what well, we're going to have to do. That's the car manufacturers and the, and the oil and gas industry. Everyone's pushed us towards cars and individual drivers for the past 50, 60 years. It would be great if we could just so now walk we're stuck. to work. Oh. Not from here to my work now, but like, I'm just saying, like, girl, where you work. It would like, take you a day. <laughs> you like 12 miles. Oh. That would take you a day. To walk 12 miles. Look it up. You would need a break. (laughs) Alexa, how long would it take to walk 12 miles? According to an Alexa Answers contributor, it would take the average human about three hours. So that's six hours a day there and back Ooh. in the daylight, which is right now about. So I have to leave at 3 a.m. Is it 11 hours of daylight? 
Okay, thank you. Thank you, Alexa. Thank you. Girl. That's a... Alexa, stop. <laughs> She's gotten out of fucking control for real. Bobby loves the bots. I hate them. Yeah. Okay. Okay, well, good sundry. I like Great it. Great sundries. What's Mine your sundry? is... Okay. Oh, oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm about to go off, and it's, <laughs> we've actually discussed it before, but there's something that happened on Reddit that then got on all the news stations. Um, basically, a recent story from Reddit that made news. Am I an asshole group on Reddit? The following is a synopsis of that post, and of course, I have it on the wrong page, but we're going to... Am I the asshole? <clears throat> a person flying from one European city to another on a plane with three seats per row, window, middle, and aisle, okay. chooses a window seat. After takeoff, the person in front reclines their seat, but the person in the middle seat behind them asks the person in the window seat not to recline because their legs extended into the space of the other seats. I'm so, so, so what? I need okay, to so go over a visual. This again. So the visual, especially for, for our listeners. So the visual is me on a Southwest flight. Okay, and somebody trying to come back. There's nowhere to go. Yeah, he's. Okay, Are you so, in the window seat? Yes. Well. I don't understand why. Yeah, wait, hold on. Window seat, aisle seat, middle seat. What's this mean? A person. And okay, with three seats per row. So that's the plane layout. They choose this person chose a window seat after takeoff. The so person in front, in front of, of them, them recline their yeah. seat. So they're in the window seat. They get reclined on. Mm -hmm. But the person in the middle seat behind them asked the person in the window seat. OK, so then you have someone behind you in the middle seat saying, don't recline because you're going to my legs go into your area. Uh -huh. You'll recline onto my legs. Uh -huh. The fuck? OK, so think okay. of me, though. Keep thinking so of me. I think of you okay. and you're OK. The person in the window seat agrees not to recline, but points out that the person in the middle seat could have chosen an aisle seat or paid extra for extra leg room to avoid inconveniencing other passengers. Correct. The person in the oh, middle right. seat claims they didn't have the option to choose an aisle seat or pay extra, but the person in the window seat maintains that they did have those options. And you are someone who... So here's the problem, okay? You tell us, because you're the one who always deals with this. Listen... Oh, no. Okay. Are you going to yell at the window seat person or are you on team? I'm team uh, tall guy. He's, okay. He was six foot eight. Oh, OK, okay. so okay. worse than me. I don't think it's very. So the whole post got shut down, but I was reading all the comments and people were like, it was very mixed. Like you should not recline. Like if you're on a 90 minute flight, why are you reclining? I would, the I was going to say problem solved. If we just stop reclining seats, you don't need to recline. Well, that's, and so people are you like, why can't recline? I recline? No one should be reclining so, ever. Thank you. On four hour flights, sit up. Right. If it's you not, need to sleep, have you ever pay taken it? extra? So here's the thing that, right. So <laughs> I, just because I'm tall doesn't mean I'm rich. Right. So you want me to pay extra because of my body that I cannot help biologically? Yeah, like, I cannot tall. help that I'm tall. It's not, by the way, I want to clear it up. It's not a weight thing. No. Bobby's my knees, knees literally slam. hit the seat in front of him. I probably have grooves in my yeah. knees from like I, just. I have pictures of it. I look over crazy. and he's hitting the seat in front of him. It has nothing to it's do. It's like on this. It's the leg room. Yeah. The, There's it's no the leg 31 room. inches of leg room. And the, and the seats keep getting smaller and closer and everything yeah. keeps getting closer together. And you're like, I don't. I don't so know what I to do. So I feel for this. Like, no, you don't need to lean your fucking seat back. It's an hour and a half flight. Like, Jesus Christ. Like, why do you. The only I've, reason you need to lay your fucking thing back is if you're in a, a medical emergency. I've never reclined in my seat. Seat on a flight, me either, because Ever. I know how it feels. I actually can say that, like, I don't remember a flight where I pressed the button and gone like. Now I have reclined in first class. Well, that's first class. And that when means I they have room. And the bed, I laid that back all the way. When you fly in first class, I paid there extra is room, to lay down. And there's room. And behind me, I knew yeah, in first know, class they you have, have like tons 25 of room. feet. It's the craziest thing. But if I'm in a regular seat sitting like this, I know the person behind me is as well. Why the fuck would you recline? <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> It's all insane, folks. Uh, so I'm really just like the Reddit post is I very like interesting. Maybe I'll put sundry. a link. I'll put a link in the show notes. Yeah, because I was like, I I get it. Yeah, but I also get I get both sides. I, I get the guy being frustrated, like yeah. I can't lean back, but like also like you said, no, we don't need to lean back. I get it for him. Fly. I get it for him because he had someone lean back on him, so he's trying to get more room more to lean room. back. That's fine, but like the fact is that first person should never. So then lying. he should have said to the first person, "Can you please Can sit you up." Not? Or the middle person should have stepped up. Two if rows you're a person that leans back, you're an asshole. You're an asshole. You're an, it's sorry. Automatic. You're an asshole. And you might be the greatest person in the world, but you lean that chair in back a, in a plane. You're I'm an done. asshole, especially for me. Like, and then I'll be like, "Ow, my knees!" And you're like, "Out loud!" And they're like, "Push!" I've seen people push against yes, your legs, and, and I'll like, have my knee and in then the back of the seat. And the they're one like time trying we, to figure it the out. One time we both held our hand against the mm -hmm. seat in front of the yep. Bobby, and we were like holding it. So they don't understand. And they couldn't lean back. They, they don't were, understand that they, they were getting can't. so mad. And so they're like slamming their back. To, and yep. I'm like, 
You're slam, and I'm of course I am a, a people quiet. pleaser. You're a submissive. So bottom. I'm like just sitting there, like taking the, the lashings. <laughs> taking oh fuck yeah, lean on I'm me. Like yeah, fucking crush me, crush me, baby. No, I don't want to be fucking crushed. And you know what? The next <sighs> time I'm on a flight, I'm gonna say something. This is the problem. If you see something, say something. I'm always embarrassed. Talk about embarrassed. What embarrasses me? Airplanes. Yeah. I hate them because I'm you so do. awkward. It's just so awkward. Sometimes you need an extender. Like there's that. Sometimes you need an extender. Sometimes you don't. Now, what's your other sundry? No, no, my other sundry isn't really a sundry. <laughs> I was just gonna. I was. I was gonna say the guy that was complaining was probably a short king, but I do like short Wait, kings. I, uh... Have you ever heard about Short King? Because now that's like the term of the term. I just have to say it's everywhere now and it's bothering oh, me. Yeah, I'm okay. like, have you ever been on the Short King though? I just want to say that just because you're short doesn't make you a Short King. It doesn't. I was the Short King one time. Oh. Who? Oh, and it was, it's good, isn't it? Oh. Some of them have a complex and they make up for it in the bedroom. No, because they want to fuck you so. Uh, yeah. The, I. Yeah. So short kings, I can see some of you. Some of you have the little man syndrome, though. But so it's a fine you, line. It's a fine line. And here. some of you take it out of the bedroom and live your life with little man syndrome. Yeah. And so, so it's a problem. If you're a short king, it, be the king, bitch. Don't be a little jester. Don't be a little. Don't be a little jester. Be the king, bit queen, king. Be a short queen. Do a be a short queen if you want to. <laughs> you can be a short queen or king, but don't be a little jester. And that's and that's true. Wow. I love yeah, that. Yeah. So anyway, again, make sure you call us. Please Ma call we us. Like, are we re I really, this is the, I'm going to just throw it out there. This is the one thing I think would be really good for the show is if we can get some audience participation. And by that, I mean, send us your shit. And I, I know care. there's people out there listening because I talked to you about it. You're like, we watch the show. I know a lot uh, of people. We, we love you. We're so happy that you're we with need us. Participation. But we want participation. We want to help you become well. Oh, I like well. that. We're going to solve your problems. And if we don't, we'll make a laugh out of it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Well, I'll try. Okay, well, and, well, we'll try. We we'll think try. we're funny. Um, yeah, yeah, well, anyway, it. make sure you subscribe and blah, 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 blah. blah and blah, we'll, blah, blah. next week is our Christmas special. <sighs> Yay. So I don't know what's going to happen there. We'll exchange presents. Okay. 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 What's the price limit? 20. 20 is good. Let's just be cheap. Okay. 20. Let's see who can get the most stuff. For twenty, you can't even get twenty items at dollar. You can't even get a fucking like, meal anymore. It's like a dollar twenty. Here's a Wendy's baked potato, twenty dollars. No chili, <laughs> no chili, honey. Fuck a dry um, ass baked potato. <sighs> yeah, and you're but, like, we'll try that. Peanut butter thing. So Merry Christmas to all, and to all a good night. Merry Christmas to all. Well, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Now. Call us now. The call is free. Six one four seven two one five three three six. Not well. Call us when you're drunk, high, and just want to say something. Not well. Or whatever. I honestly. Call us when you're not well, and we'll make you well. Or just say, I really want drunk calls too. Okay. okay.